In the last uh, video, I just showed you how to solve a system of simultaneous equations by the means of substitution. So here we had two equations with two unknowns, and we had to find a pair of x and y values that solve both equations. And we were able to substitute in order to do this. But there's another way of doing it. In fact, sometimes this way is easier. It may sound more complicated, but actually it works out better in really yucky looking equations. So here's an example. Uh, maybe we want to try to solve something like this. Let's just make sure I'm writing in black here. So the goal is going to be to solve maybe something uh, different, a little bit different. So maybe we want to try to solve 2x uh, plus 3y equals 4. And the other equation is x minus 2y. I'm going to make that equal minus 5. So as before, where I explained the steps for elimination, uh, sorry, for substitution, let me do the steps for elimination. So before, see, we had a few different steps. So let's do the same thing here. So for elimination, step one, uh, let's say we can multiply or divide either equation or both. You can also do that too, by anything you like. Now that sounds pretty silly. I mean, I can just multiply this top equation by 12 million. Sure, 12 million times 2x plus 12 million times 3y plus 12 million times 4. I could do that if I wanted. But the idea is that you want your x's and y's to line up. I'll explain what I mean here in a second. The idea is that then you add or subtract the two equations to eliminate, this is the important part, one variable. So you're going to completely get rid of one of the letters. That's the idea behind it. And then three, and you solve for both variables. So the key is you want to try to get this elimination to happen. Now this may not make any sense right now either, so let me explain it. See, right now, I could look at this equation one and this equation two, and I can just add these two equations. And remember, if I add equations, I have to add everything. So in other words, if I wanted to add these two equations, I would say two x plus x, that would give me three x. And three y plus negative two y, well that would give me one y. And then four minus five would give me negative one. Unfortunately, I would still have an x, I'd still have a y. So see, I, I didn't do the right thing because I wasn't really eliminating anything. The idea is to find something that I can multiply one of the equations by, or maybe both, that make this happen. So for example, I could decide to target the x's. I want to get rid of the x's. If I add or subtract them right now, 2x plus x, or even 2x minus x, I'm not going to get rid of the x's. But what if this had been a 2? You see how you sort of wish that this here was a 2x? Then 2x minus 2x, that would get rid of it. So see, that's the key behind multiplying or dividing by anything. I'm going to, for example, here, I'm going to multiply uh, equation, I'm going to say EQN for equation. So equation 2, maybe I should label them. This is equation 1, this is equation 2. I'm going to multiply equation 2 by Actually, I'm going to do by the number 2. This might seem a little bit confusing. So I'm going to multiply equation 2 by the number 2. In other words, let me just rewrite the two equations then. So I'll write down the first one. I'm going to leave the first equation the same. I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it. But the second equation, I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So that means x times 2 is going to give me 2x. Minus 2y, I still have to multiply that by 2 as well. So minus 2y times 2 is going to give me minus 4y. And minus 5 times 2 is going to give me minus 10. See, so I've done this step one. I've multiplied or divided either equation by anything I liked. I multiplied the second equation by the number 2. See what I have here? Now, key thing is now I can add or subtract the two equations to eliminate one variable. If I add the two equations, nothing exciting is going to happen. I'm going to have 2x plus 2x is going to give me 4x, and I'm going to have some y's sitting around as well. That won't really work. But if I subtract the two equations, okay, this is the important thing. I'm going to subtract the two equations. So that means here I'm going to have 4. Let's just start off on the right here. I'm going to have 4 minus negative 10. 
it's really important to be careful with the signs here. It's not just 4 minus 10, that's adding them. That's adding this number plus this negative number. I've got to subtract them. So 4 minus negative 10, if you remember what a minus minus gives you, it gives you a plus. So 4 plus 10 gives you 14. It's really important to get that right. Same thing here. 3y minus negative 4y gives you 3y plus 4y. So that's 3y plus 4y is going to be 7y. And 2x minus 2x is going to cancel out. So do you notice now I don't have any x's going on? That's why I've eliminated one variable. Now the question is, uh, the last step is just to solve for both variables. So I've got one equation now with one unknown. I've got 7y equals 14. You could probably just guess the value. What value multiplied by 7 gives you 14? And you'd hopefully know that it's 2. But if you're not really sure, you can always use good old trusty algebra rules which say that if I want to get y by itself, all I have to do is do the opposite of what's being done to it. So right now there's a 7 glued up against it, and that means it's multiplying it, and the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So that means I can say then that y equals, well, 14 divided by 7, therefore I can say that y equals 2. So I found one variable. I know what y is now. I need to find something for x. So I need any equation that I can find for x. Maybe I'll use this second one here because it seems easier to get x by itself. See this equation right here, I could get x on its own, but it's going to be a little bit complicated. I'm going to have actually a fraction going on, and I prefer not to work with fractions unless I need to. So I'm going to choose this second equation here and get x by itself. Okay, so I'm going to say x, I'm going to work with this one here. x equals, uh, sorry, x minus 2y equals negative 5. I'm going to try to work with that one. So as I do that then, I want to, well first of all, plug in what my y is. I know my y is 2. That means x minus 2 times 2 is going to equal negative 5. That's following the equation. Now I can figure this out a little bit more. What's minus 2 times 2? Well that gives me minus 4. Remember order of operations, do multiplying first. Don't subtract x minus 2 and then multiply everything by 2. You, it's just the minus 2 that's multiplied by 2. So in this case, I do multiplication first, so I get x minus 4 equals negative 5, and I dump the 4 to the right. So since it's a separate term, uh, right now it's being subtracted, so I can do opposites, which is adding. So I'm going to get x equals minus 5 plus 4. Therefore, I can say that x equals, well, what's negative 5 plus 4? And if you're not sure about that, you can always draw yourself a number line. Right, you can start off at 4, 5 here. Minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 here. So if I start off at minus 5, and I add 4 to it, I go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. So I end up at minus 1, just in case you always forget this stuff. Or you can think of it as it's positive 4, and you subtract 5 from it. There's lots of ways of looking at it. So x will be negative 1. I like to write it up here, just to make sure I have a nice pair of numbers. So I also write the x first and the y. We happen to have found y first, though, so that's just why I wrote it like that. So x equals negative 1 and y equals 4 should solve this equation and this equation. Let's see if it really does. If I put in a negative 1 for x, just imagine in your head now, 2 times negative 1, that gives you negative 2. And that means negative 2 plus 3 times 2, well 3 times 2 is 6. So this is negative 2 plus 6, that does indeed give you 4. Let's think of this one right here. This one right here should be, again, x is negative 1. So I put in a negative 1 here. Negative 1 minus 2 times 2. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. So negative 1 minus 4 is indeed minus 5. If you're not sure, just do it by hand. Take your time. But you'll see that these two answers solve both equations at the same time. So we've solved these two simultaneous equations by elimination. Now later on you'll see, I'll be showing you that uh, we can solve, we don't have to stop there, we can have three equations with three unknowns, or ten equations with ten unknowns. And doing it by elimination or substitution will work, but it's very lengthy. There's a much better way to do it by using matrices. It's a nice, really handy trick. You can solve as many equations as you feel like, with as many different unknowns as you feel like. As long as you have the same number of equations as unknowns, you can always solve it. But substitution and elimination are easy to start with at least.